So then range, that's one of the, one of the key benefits of, uh, of LoRa. So there is a uh, mathematical model to calculate the free space path loss. So that's the distance that your transmission can travel, um, that it can still be received by, uh, by the endpoint, by a gateway or the other way around, by the end device. So the free space path loss is this formula, um, and it takes into account the distance between the transceiver and the receiver end, uh, as well as the frequency. And this is also why uh, a lower frequency sub-gigahertz communication is longer range than um, a higher frequency. Uh, so only because of the frequency, the range is longer because it's sub-gigahertz as compared to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, uh, which operate typically in 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Now, here you have the, the overview on the left. Uh, you see the uh, transmission power uh, that's in, in dBm. On the right side, you see the Rx power. Uh, so that's on the receiver side. Now, the Rx power is the transmission power, so that's the what the uh, transmitter used to transmit the message, uh, plus the antenna gain for transmitting the message. Uh, there is some connector loss, uh, so that's negative on the transmitter side. Um, and then on the receiver end, you have also an antenna gain and some antenna loss. And then uh, the, the goal is obviously that the, the resulting Rx power is higher than the receiver sensitivity. If it's below the receiver sensitivity, then your message gets lost in space. So this is what you don't want. So your, your, receiver, your receiver sensitivity needs to be sufficiently low, uh, or your range should be sufficiently short um, uh, to uh, receive the message. So that's what you want, basically. And you can cal calculate all of this. So the receiver sensitivity is also a formula. Uh, it takes into account the thermal noise uh, of the bandwidth, in this case, room temperature, um, the bandwidth that's used. Uh, so here, the uh, spreading the, or the, the, spread, the spread spectrum aspect of LoRa uh, is handy uh, because that's a high bandwidth. Then there is the signal to noise uh, limit, and this is a number uh, that depends on the data rate. So here is the factor of the spreading factor that influences the range directly. Then there is a noise figure, uh, so that's a hardware characteristic. And then uh, you have a link budget. And the link budget is what determines range. Uh, and I'll get to that in a bit. So this is the overall formula, you don't have to uh, know this formula on top of your head to pass the LoRaWAN fundamentals certification. Um, but all these uh, factors are all relating to um, the range and also why. So here's an example. Uh, with 125 kilohertz bandwidth, so that's the typical bandwidth used in LoRa communications, a spreading factor of 12, um, that's the, the highest spreading factor or the lowest data rate, uh, which is best for the longest range. Um, there is a uh, signal-to-noise ratio uh, limit of 20 dB, um, sorry, minus 20 dB, a noise figure, 6 dBm, that's a characteristic of the end device, and then when the receiver uses 14 dBm, you can calculate that the receiver sensitivity is minus 137 dBm, and if you uh, measure the difference between plus 14 dB <coughs> of the transmit power with the Rx sensitivity of minus 137, you get a link budget of 151 dBm. So that is what you see here. You have the transmit power on the top left, that's 14. You have the receiver sensitivity of minus 137, and that gives you a link budget of 151. So how do, what does that mean? What does 151 mean? So here you see a comparison with other wireless technologies. So in Wi-Fi, for example, the transmit power is higher, so that uh, draws more battery. Uh, the receiver sensitivity is also higher, and that means that your link budget is much smaller. It's uh, 95 and a half. LoRa is 151, and you can do the same calculation for narrowband IoT, which is a cellular IoT technology, uh, which has a similar link budget. 
But you see here also that LoRa reaches a similar language jet, 151, with much less transmit power. And this is a logarithmic scale. It's in fact eight times more power for narrowband IoT, eight times more power to get the same link budget uh, than with LoRa. And that also makes LoRa, just from a physics standpoint, uh, much, much uh, better for battery life. So that's the theory. What does that mean in practice? Um, well, thanks to the Things Network community, um, there have been a, a lot of experiments with finding what is the practical limit, what is, what is the, the real range that you can get um, uh, with, uh, with LoRa. So there have been community members that uh, set up uh, senders and receivers on, uh, on mountains in the Alps, for example, and they reach hundreds of kilometers of range on Earth. Uh, so that's already quite promising. Um, so the theoretical maximum is 850 kilometers uh, with the free space path loss algorithm that I showed before. And during the Things Virtual Conference uh, in early 2020, uh, there was an, another experiment with a helium balloon and with a, a small um, a, a, a transceiver that sends a message with a normal uh, spectrum regulations for, the, for Europe. So that's uh, 14 dBm or 25 milliwatts of uh, power. It sent a message from all the way from a weather balloon. Uh, I think it was like 36 kilometers of altitude and it reached the gateway in uh, Czech Republic. And that's 832 kilometers. Um, so that it, it's real. And then the question is why can't you cover all of Europe or all of the US or all of Australia with a single gateway? Uh, and that's obviously uh, because free space is only in space. And on Earth, um, we have uh, factors like the structural attenuation, so that's the material building, buildings, for example, uh, trees, things like that. There is reflection and diffraction. Uh, so there are um, buildings with, uh, with a lot of glass that reflect the, uh, the RF signal. And also there is a Fresnel zone. Uh, so even if you have a line of sight, uh, still, uh, there has to be a uh, there has to be a lot of uh, line of sight, basically around it, to communicate well. So all these factors negatively influence uh, the range. So interference and multipath. Um, there have been quite some scientific research on this topic, and the experimental results so far are that LoRa has a very high immunity. Uh, to these phenomena, um, uh, especially in low data rates, uh, and, and so the, the higher spreading factors. And what's nice about the adaptive data rate is that this can dynamically be configured, and also that um, since it's unlicensed spectrum, anyone can set up gateways, and that also means that uh, if you need better coverage, if you need uh, to have gateways closer to an end device, you basically buy a gateway and install it there because you don't depend on a public operator to do so. Finally, another uh, physics aspect uh, that's important to note and that uh, LoRa performs um, uh, really well on this aspect is the Doppler effect. And that's the, uh, when a device would be moving really fast from uh, away from a gateway or towards a gateway. So it's the same effect as if you hear a police car passing by and you hear that the uh, serene, serene uh, changes uh, in sound. Uh, that's the same with, um, uh, this, it's cha changing the frequency. And uh, LoRa has proven to be super um, uh, robust also against this effect. And that means that you can also install LoRa devices on uh, moving objects like cars and trains uh, and, and even airplanes uh, sometimes. So what are the considerations? Um, you can, it's always better to install gateways outdoors and on uh, higher altitudes. And there's also a, uh, also quite some research on this. Uh, so it's really hard to say beforehand what the range of a particular gateway in a particular setup will be because it depends on so many different things. Um, um, and there are also different gateways, and I'll get to that in the end. Um, but the, so the range depends on indoor or outdoor placements, as well as the uh, elevation of the gateway, and also obviously the elevation of the end device. 
So summarizing on LoRa, it's long range, uh, it's a very low power consumption. Um, because of all sorts of mechanisms, you can have a very high network capacity. It's robust, is robust to many different things like interference, multipath, fading, Doppler effect. Um, and that makes it a really good choice for uh, IoT solutions.